Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So as I've discussed before on this channel, NASA's Artemis 3 mission will return humans to the moon for the first time in over 50 years. It's now targeted to happen in mid-2027, but now that it's 2025, that doesn't seem that far away. But leading up to this historic launch, NASA recently launched a challenge to civilian scientists to help them figure out a solution to a potential emergency scenario that could happen on our return to the moon. And this challenge could garner the winner up to $45,000. Yep, that is a real thing. So let's take a look at what this emergency lunar challenge is all about and how it weirdly reminds me of like those insane old timey carnival rides from like the 30s, 40s, and 50s. There's a connection. I swear. So on November 14th, 2024, NASA's South Pole Safety Designing NASA's Lunar Rescue System Challenge opened up on a website called HeroX.com. And according to the website, the goal of the challenge is to create a compact, efficient system for astronaut rescue on the lunar surface, helping ensure swift, safe evacuation in extreme conditions. And this is the issue that they're trying to address. In the unforgiving lunar environment, the possibility of an astronaut crew member becoming incapacitated due to unforeseen circumstances, injury, medical emergency, or a mission-related accident, is a critical concern, starting with the upcoming Artemis III mission, where two astronaut crew members will explore the lunar south pole. The moon's surface is littered with rocks, ranging from 0.15 to 20 meters in diameter, and craters spanning 1 to 30 meters wide, making navigation challenging even under optimal conditions. The low gravity, unique lighting conditions, extreme temperatures, and availability of only one person to perform the rescue further complicate any rescue efforts. Among the critical concerns is the safety of astronauts during extravehicular activities. If an astronaut crew member becomes incapacitated during a mission, the ability to return them safely and promptly to the human landing system is essential. A single crew member should be able to transport an incapacitated crew member distances of up to two kilometers and a slope of up to 20 degrees on the lunar terrain without the assistance of a lunar rover. So basically the point of the challenge is to create the procedures and equipment to transport an incapacitated astronaut in the event of an emergency, which is a pretty substantial challenge to throw out there. It's not like, oh, help us name this adorable rover or get your name engraved on a microchip going to Saturn. It's like, help us keep these astronauts safe. The challenge explanation goes on to say, this pressing issue opens the door for innovative solutions. We are looking for a cutting edge design that is low in mass and easy to deploy, enabling one astronaut crew member to safely transport their suited and fully incapacitated partner back to the human landing system. The solution must perform effectively in the moon's extreme South Pole environment and operate independently of a lunar rover. Your creativity and expertise could bridge this critical gap, enhancing the safety measures for future lunar explorers. By addressing this challenge, you have the opportunity to contribute to the next giant leap in human space exploration. Now, clearly, whatever they are building here on Earth would be affected by the moon's gravity. So so an astronaut wearing the Artemis program's specially designed Axiom Extravehicular Mobility Unit weighs about 755 pounds on Earth. That translates to about 125 pounds on the moon. Still, as many of us know, trying to pick up someone who is not helping you at all, even if they are only roughly 125 pounds, and possibly injured, trying to move them over a mile up hilly terrain while keeping yourself safe, this is no small feat. And if all that weren't enough, the challenge keeps saying you can't use a lunar rover because lunar rovers are not expected to return with the astronauts until at least Artemis 5. And there are a few more must-have requirements for the applicant's designs. Lighter is better, and NASA is hoping for a system that weighs less than 50 pounds and can be as compact as possible when stored. The winning system must be easy to deploy and use and employ materials capable of handling the lunar environment's 
temperature changes, vacuum conditions, and regolithic dust. They also add that nice to have features might include adaptability, body size accommodations, multifunctionality, and ease of manufacturing. And if all that seems like a lot, NASA does note that the design does not need to have medical treatment capacities or have any complex integrations with other existing astronaut systems. They're like, yeah, yeah, we don't wanna make it too hard for you guys. So while the final design is up to the applicants, NASA does seem particularly interested in blueprints for what amounts to like a sled-like or wheeled lunar medical stretcher. Judges want to know how your design can be transported and functions once deployed while discussing aspects like stability, control, speed of movement, and how it navigates the challenging lunar terrain. And the design will need to, once again, not only ensure the safety of the incapacitated astronaut, but for the crewmate as well. A successful application will emphasize the practicality of your design in an emergency scenario, ensuring it can be deployed rapidly and effectively when needed most. Now you might be thinking, okay, NASA, like, you know, good for you for putting this challenge out there, but like, who is really going to apply for this? Well, I checked and as of this recording, there are over 1,700 individual innovators signed up for this project and over 125 teams. And they've got a map of where these teams are registered and they're really from all over the world except for maybe Greenland. Sorry, Greenland. HeroX also has a forum on its website where ideas between teams can be shared and discussed. And the schedule looks like this. So the challenge launched on November 14th. On January 9th, they will host a Q&A webinar. The submission deadline is January 23rd. And on February 27th, 2025, the winning team and or individual innovator will be announced. Here's some money. Thank you for your idea. Okay, bye. So yeah, that's the story. I don't know why, but I am kind of bewildered by this challenge. It feels so serious and like, clearly that's a need that needs to be met, but it just feels like a lot to throw out to civilian scientists. I'm not saying that people aren't up for it. I mean, far from it, but like, wow, <laughs> okay like a rescue system, a full rescue system designed by civilian scientists. Like, okay. I think it also makes me laugh because I've seen so much footage of those Apollo astronauts just like freewheeling it in those lunar vehicles in the 70s, just being like, woo, like spinning around, kicking up dust. I mean, just look at these guys. <laughs> like, was there a plan here? Though to be fair, they probably weren't as far away from their service module, but still, which now ties back in to how all this reminds me of old timey fairground rides. Like I've seen videos of some of these rides and I'm like, what? You guys used to go on that? Like what? What even is this? How was this ever even safe? And my grandparents are like, yeah, we love that ride. It was great. So maybe now NASA is just like, um, we should have a plan for this, maybe. Maybe. So if you or someone you know is interested in applying to this challenge or even learning more about it, I will post a link in the description below. And if you did apply, please mention it to me in the comments because I would be super interested to know. Okay, that's it for now. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, I will see you in the next video.